What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial for you. So I got a couple questions yesterday about how to apply the maps that you can create using this free tool Materialize when you create your textures. So I figured I'd make a video just kind of walking you through that. Um, today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting the show in the links down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we talked yesterday about how to set up maps and tiling using the tool Materialize. And what it does is it allows you to take an image like this one and generate different maps from it. So things like height maps and normal maps to make textures look more realistic. You can see how what that does is that creates a fairly realistic rocks and stones look using a texture and that's great but now we have to save that which all you have to do is click save and then save it in a location that you want but then what do you do with the maps so I'm gonna show you how to work with these maps these other maps would work the same way they just go in a different place inside V-Ray but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into SketchUp and I think what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm just gonna draw kind of a box a little bit like the one that's actually in materialize and I'm just gonna push pull that up and we're just gonna use Use this um, as a place to put our material and so the first thing we have to do is we have to import our material so to do that you're gonna go into the material section of your tray you're gonna click the button for add material and then in this case we're gonna call this pebbles and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and we're gonna load our texture image so in this case if you remember the diffuse is what's um, is the material that we want to use the diffuse is basically the color map that's in here you'll notice this is a pretty big file um, you may want to try to manage that file size a little bit when you save these in this case I'm not really gonna worry about it very much I think in this case this might have been because I set these new texture sizes to 4096 um, you could probably save that as a smaller texture by selecting um, a lower option when you do your tile map um, but in this case we'll go ahead and use this because we're not um, applying a lot of materials in this model so what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on this diffuse map that's gonna bring that in as your material and we're gonna apply this to this face but the first thing you need to remember and this is really important when working in V-Ray is this this needs to be a group so you need to apply your material to the outside of a group otherwise your height map isn't gonna work or your um, your displacement map isn't gonna work and that's just kind of a function of V-Ray it only really works with the displacement maps if your materials are applied to the outside of a group so I'm just gonna double click on this face I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click make group and then I'm gonna apply this pebbles material to that group so I'm just gonna click on that We'll click on this face. And in this case, I may actually make this a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna turn this up to maybe three feet. So just so this will be a little bit more pronounced. So all I did is I went into the edit tab and I just adjusted how big the tiling of this image is. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can get to work in V-Ray actually rendering this. So right now, if we were to render this, if I was to click on this button for interactive render, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pop up a window and you can see how it's gonna render this um, using the light inside your model. And so you'll notice there's nothing particularly interesting about this right now. It's just a flat texture on a face because we haven't applied any maps yet. And so to apply our maps, we're going to go into the V-Ray Asset Editor. And by the way, this is similar in other programs as well. You just have to find the place where these maps go. Um, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our pebbles material and we're going to go down into our material option. No, we're going to go down into our maps and we're going to apply bump and normal mapping and displacement maps. And so these in particular are the maps that we wanna worry about for this tutorial. And so we're gonna go down and we're gonna open up the, the options for bump and normal mapping and displacement. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn both of these on. And we'll start and turn this one on. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this down and we're gonna select the option for normal map. And then we need to actually load that image in the file. So to do that, you're gonna click on this box, you're gonna go into bitmap, and then you're gonna find the, the file that you're looking for. In this case, that's gonna be the pebbles underscore normal because that's a normal map. So we're gonna bring that in and that's gonna get mapped to your object. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click back. 
and we'll go ahead and rerun our interactive render. So I find when you, uh, I find that whenever you add a map to an object, um, it's best to just stop and start this render. Um, sometimes these things just need to like restart in here, but you can see, you can see if you really zoom in on these pebbles, you're getting a little bit of a shadow from that normal map. And probably the best way to see it is to come up and turn off your diffuse map. So your diffuse map is basically your image. So we turn that off. Well, now if you zoom in, you can kind of see the outline of the normal map in here and how that's being used to generate a little bit of a shadow. And you can see how that's great for faking some shadows, but it's really not giving you the uh, full look that we're going for with this. So I'm going to turn my fuse map back on well, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go in and we're gonna load our displacement map so to do that you're gonna click this little button here to enable displacement map then you're gonna do the same thing that we did before where you click on this button and you go find your map and in this case we're looking for the pebbles underscore height map we're gonna double click on that and we're gonna bring that in and so now if I go back here and I'm gonna rerun my interactive render what you're gonna notice when you do this is first of all, it's gonna take longer to render because when you do something like this, it, it just takes longer because there's more stuff that uh, this has to, uh, this has to basically figure out when it's rendering. But if I rotate down now, or more stuff that it has to calculate. If I rotate down now, you're gonna notice that these rocks actually have a height to them where they didn't before. So again, we'll turn our diffuse map off and you can see how these edges are actually getting moved up and down inside of V-Ray. It's not affecting your model itself, but these are actually getting moved up and down so that it's generating real shadows in here. And one thing to note is you can adjust the strength of this effect by going into your displacement section and changing the amount to a higher value. So for example, if I change this value to two, then the up and down dictated by the displacement map is gonna be higher, and you can see how your shadows are gonna be more pronounced. Now you do have to be careful with this because of the way this is mapped using the image, you can tell that uh, when you really zoom in, there's a whole bunch of little ups and downs on here that can make this look a little bit less realistic. So you kind of have to weigh the balance here between getting enough that this looks like it's actually 3D and not so much that everything looks um, everything looks unrealistic. So if we turn our diffuse map back on, you can see how this uh, really generates kind of a realistic rock material using only a texture image and a map. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know about displacement and normal maps? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.